In this video, we're looking at yeah, trigonometric functions and the way they're graphed. So on your screen, I'm going to quickly go through just your base functions. So sine theta here, it starts at zero degrees. And then at 90 degrees, it hits one, goes back down, reaches zero again at 180, then goes into the negatives until it hits 360 again. And it repeats itself, right? That's the pattern. It repeats itself every 360 degrees for just your base function. So here's your cosine function, and this time it starts at 1, and then it hits 0 at 90, goes back through to 270, and then back up. So it it's 360, it's one period, or one wave, I guess, is from there, right? From 0 to 360, but it starts at 1 this time. So sine starts at 0, cos starts at 1. And then 10 looks a little bit different. It goes up until it hit, just gets close to 90, and then down the bottom, you can see it repeats itself going up and then repeats itself again. So tan's a little bit different to the other two. So we're going to talk about some properties and how we go about uh, drawing these and graphing these. So they have unique words. Now, trigonometric functions are known as what we call periodic functions because they repeat themselves uh, at a set interval. So, for example, in the, ex uh, in the basic ones, it's 360. All right. So 360 is its period. So the period is the length of one cycle of a function. So in our example here, if I go and draw here, 360 is there, and then it repeats itself again here. It repeats itself here, and repeats itself here. So you can see it's the same repeating wave in those periods that I've highlighted. So this would be one period, this would be another period, and this would be another period. Now we have something else called the center. Now the center value is just your y value that the wave moves up and down from. So in our example at the top here, our center value is zero. All right, so you can see here it's going up and down from that zero line. So when you're going to, uh, you know your center value because it's just your c value. So if I write this, so y equals sine theta plus c, or for example, y equals cos theta plus c, y equals tan theta plus c. Those c values are your center. So if you have a positive c, you know it's been, it's shifted upwards, your original graph. So if it was plus one, you'd know that your wave would be oscillating, going up and down around one. And if it was negative, it shifted downwards. So if it was negative one, the whole graph, original graph would move down to negative one and that's where it would be oscillating up and down from. So amplitude. Amplitude is just the height going up and down from the center. So if I go back up here to this one, my amplitude is this distance here. Well, not that. It's from here to here, all right? That's my amplitude. So that has an amplitude of one because it's going up one there and it's going down one there, all right? So that's your amplitude. Now your phase, your phase is just the shift uh, left or right. So if I'm going into talk, talking about your phase, it's essentially where you have a bracketed area. So if I had something like y equals sine and then x plus b, your b value is your amplitude, is your phase, sorry. So plus b, shifts to the left and a negative b shifts to the right and that's the same for cos and tan now if we're talking about period and amplitude for a second so again remember period is how often the wave repeats itself and amplitude is the height up and down so if i had something that takes the form of y equals k sine uh, a x, right? Or if I took this y equals cos x, where it's, again, we have k and we have a. And lastly, y equals 10, where again, we have a k and we have an a, right? So your k value is your amplitude. All right, so that's how far up and down the way the waves going up and down. So k, the number at the front, is how far up and down 
that the wave is going. Now, your period is the A value. Now, it is a little bit different. So for cos and sine, so for cos and sine, right, you find your period by going 2 pi divided by whatever that A value is. Tan's a little bit different. Tan's it's unique. It's a little bit unique. For tan, it's pi over A, okay? It's not the 2 pi that you normally have. So if you're trying to find the period for cos or sine, it's 2 pi over A, and then for tan, it's just pi over A. Okay, so here we're actually going to use some of these values and sketch it. So here we have y equals 5 sine x. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm actually just going to draw the original graph. So I know it's going to be kind of tight here, but essentially it's going to look something... Something like that. That would be your original y equals sine x. Okay. Now the only thing that's changing is the 5. So this 5 here. Now I know that's our k value and k was my amplitude. So I know that 5 is my amplitude. And all the amplitude was, remember, was how far it's going up and how far it's going down from that center line. So I know now it's crossing going up to neck up to five back down to negative five down here and then back up so this red one is going to be my five sine x i always like to draw the original graph so i have a reference point and then i go okay so what's different to the original in this case it had an amplitude of five so i drew that amplitude of five so now what happens if i have sine four x Alright, so how I like to look at this is I go, alright, well, I know that that's the period. I'm going to draw my original wave again first, because again, I always like to do that as a reference point. So it's coming up here, down, through there, and then back up, alright? They don't have to be perfect. I know this one, though, is our A value. My 4 is my A value, and for sine, remember, the sine period was 2 pi over a, so in this case it's 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. So what that means, that pi over 2 means I'm getting a full wave every pi and 2. So I should be getting a full wave here, 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 and here. Alright? I should have a full, so that black line should all be scrunched down to fit in each of those uh, waves there. So what that means is if I'm going to do I'll do this in green I know that uh, at the halfway point I'm crossing at zero so up here I'm here and here I'm here So I should look something like it's going really rapidly up down up All right again, I just repeat that so up here up here up down up up down up again, these don't have to be perfect That last one was just a little bit too bad. I should give up on this last one. Up, down, up. Anyway, you get the point. Alright? So, it's fitting four waves now, essentially. That four almost is like saying, well, I'm fitting four of these sine waves in the same place that I used to fit only one. Alright? So, every pi on two, we should be fitting a full wave. So we covered a lot there. So again, I'll quickly recap some of the stuff we covered. So here on your screen are your original sine and cos wave. There's your original tan. Feel free to pause it and draw them if you want. Remember, your period is the length of one cycle of that function. Your center is that line where it's moving up and down from, where everything comes back to. It's your starting point for sine, and it's your uh, midway point for cos. Your amplitude is the height up and down from the center, so how much it's stretching upwards and how much it's stretching downwards. Your phase is whether it's shifting to the left or the right, and you know that's a phase because it'll be in brackets. And lastly, your uh, amplitude value is just the number out the front, so your K in this case, and your period, depending if you have cos, sine, or tan, if it's cos and sine, it's 2 pi over A, and it's the number connected to the X.